What's up guys? We are going to talk about the Django middleware. So in Django, a middleware is a plugin that alters each request and response throughout your Django project globally. Now, why should we use middlewares? Fundamentally, when you create a new project in Django Web Framework, Django automatically generate some middleware configuration in your project settings. Those uh, default configurations properly some features such as checking the user authentication, adding the user objects in a request session. So we use our middleware to add authentication credentials on a request. We can also use the middleware to add or check context data in templates or response. Uh, you will see when you are using a third party application, the application that you install in Django, they will usually inject some context data in templates or check context data in templates via the middleware. We can also use the middleware to verify a token altering and this is in the security context where you are using a middleware to check if from the request to the response there is no token altering to that particular traffic. We can also use a middleware to trigger a nice-sync IO events loop to kind of like uh, alleviate uh, the job if not the processing on the view so you can create a, um, you can trigger an async IO events loop via a middleware. So let's go to the demo and demonstrate how we can create a simple middleware in Django Web Framework. Okay, before we start creating a new middleware, we need to specify, create a folder or a package where our middleware will be located. So let's create a new package in our project we call the package middleware so now we need to create a new module async async middleware so the the factory that creates a middleware in Django should either be a function or a class. But for the sake of this uh, demonstration, we'll be using a class uh, because the class is more extensible than a function. So let's name this class async middleware. And um, as a factory, we need the init, which is our constructor. The init gets uh, takes in the get response, and the get response here should be the response from the preceding from the from the preceding middleware in the middleware chains. So when you are creating a constructor for the middleware factory, uh, Django recommends that you have only one parameter. So we only need get response as our preceding response from the other middleware. So and then we initialize in the constructor get response which should be equal to get response. And then we have the call, the magic call. Uh, the magic call in Python runs when you, not when you create an instance of your class, but when you call your class. Yes, so when this async middleware is called, it takes in a request. And of course, as you may guess, it will retain a response. But where the response come from? The response come from the self gets response. 
which takes in um, a request. Pretty simple. That's the way you can create a basic middleware in Django Web Framework. So now we need to import our middleware in our settings. To do that, we can just go to settings, go to middleware. We have a property name of middleware. It's a list that all the, all the middleware uh, factories or all the middleware classes. As we can see, uh, we have uh, default middlewares uh, from when we create our project in Django. We have the security middleware, we have the session middleware, which initialize the session. We have the common middleware, which is a must have, sort of recommended for Django. Um, you know, in the documentation Django, it said that there is a requirement to have middlewares for your project, but a Django recommend that you should at least have a common middleware. So when the request comes in in Django, it comes uh, from top uh, to the bottom. When the response uh, is going out, the response comes from bottom up. So from the X frame option middleware to the security middleware, that's the way the response goes out. Um, when the when the request is coming, start from the security middleware to. So it depends uh, if our middleware we're creating should be dependent of uh, any of these uh, middlewares. We need to place it so that uh, the dependency can make sense as a middleware receive a request, alter or check the request, the request to the subsequent uh, middleware in the middleware list so middleware async middleware and the name of the class is also async what we need so we import uh, our middleware class from the middleware module in middleware's package um, let's run our server and see manage by run server see what's gonna happen okay it's running our server is running we can try to issue a request curl x get http localhost a thousand v1.0 policy that's policy okay we got our policy and if we check the server everything is running as expected which means we create our middleware but our middleware is doing exactly nothing it just you know it's not altering or checking anything from request to the response so how do we confirm that our middleware is exactly doing something as you can see when we call our, when our middleware is called, everything before the response, which is everything related to the call to be executed before, before the response slash the view should be here. So if we want to catch, let's say we want to catch something from the request, we can print Print request meta. Let's get the 
HTTP host. So we want our middleware to just print the HTTP host. We can do that every time we issue a request and check our server. There we go. Now we can see our middleware can print the HTTP host from the request. Pretty simple. That's the way we can create a middleware using um, a class instead of a function. So remember, the constructor in the middleware takes in a response, get response, which is a preceding response uh, from the bottom middleware. And we have the, the magic or the special function uh, down the call that's when we call our middleware. Next, we look at other methods we can implement in our middleware or factory to alter the response or the request or in our Django project. We have uh, the method process view, which can also be implemented in our middleware. So the process view method is called before Django called the view. You know, let's say for each request, we wanna, before we call the view, we wanna do something about the request or we want to do something about the view before the view is actually called. Let's say, for instance, we want to open the async IO events loop that will send some data, manipulate uh, some data, do some bunch of computation before the view is called. We can implement that in process view. Um, so the process view takes in a request as a HTTP or a request object. It takes in also the view function, which will be of type or uh, view set or type view in Django. Also, it takes the positional arguments and the keyword arguments. And these functions should call the view function. So let's go to the demo and demonstrate how we can create, how we can implement the process view in our async middleware. Process view. Now that we can catch the HTTP host from our request using a customized middleware if we want to implement the process view the process view takes in a request a view function where i should have just say a view but what am i saying the view function because whether you're using a class view or a function view when the view is called it's always called as a function so the view function, the positional arguments. The positional arguments is something like in your request where when you have a domain slash path slash you know argument one like a ID your own name, something like this. These are positional arguments. And we also, the process view also takes in the keyword argument. And the keyword argument is when your ID should be equal to something like a one, two, three. So that's process view and the process view should retain, should call the view. Of course, you cannot call the view without, you cannot call the view without a request. So if we want to implement uh, the process view without altering anything from our view function or our request, we can just call process, we can just call function view and then uh, we pass in a request. If we save, we can see the server reload without any error. And if we try to issue, if we issue our request again, Let's pretty print the uh, accept application JSON indent for. Okay, we can see we get our policy objects from the database. We got the response without 
if we check on the status on the server we're not getting any error still we can see our middleware is printing the http host from our uh, projects of where the server is running yeah which means the process view is working without any problem what can we do with process view as i stated it depends on why you should create your middleware but in process view we can open uh, a async io event loop you can also you know send the email from the view in the process view because the process view is called before the view is called so this one run before the view is called you can do some logic here so to demonstrate that we are really doing something with the process view we can um, uh, for instance we may check that our view class even if on the view we are running the function as view we want to make sure in our view class we have a property can send the email so we can for instance send the email getting the property of the view before we return the view this is just an example it doesn't mean that uh, that's the way we should go about that but for the sake of this video we're trying to demonstrate to make sure the process view effectively run before the view set is called so to do so uh, we need to get the class of this function let's call this variable class name view class name since the view is the function we can convert star or get all the property of the view and um, as a dictionary we get the property class which will retain the name of the class where this uh, view is executing we can check now if if get attribute view class name as can uh, send email so if the class where this view is being run as a property can send email we can just print yes it it can send email if not we can print no it cannot send an email so we try to make sure that uh, the process view is run before the view is called or uh, let's issue some requests the request is successfully issued and it's also respond yes it can send the email as you can see in our log message or uh, we got the message yes it can send email which implies that our class as a property name can send email. To verify that, we can go on the policy view set since we are calling the policy view set. We can see we have a property can send email. That's the way we can run our process view before the, the view can be called.